Okay, so hello everybody. Hello guys. Uh, nice. Welcome you. Uh, I would like to welcome you on today's session, uh, Unified Networking for VMs and co Containers in OpenStack on Kubernetes. My name is Artur Korzeniewski. My I'm working uh, as software engineer at Intel. Uh, my name is Vladimir Derman. I'm working as software engineer and de deployment engineer in Mirantis. Yeah, we have prepared some research about how to connect VMs in one uh, environment, networking environment. So uh, for our purposes, we defined United uh, Unified Networking as uh, VM and containers uh, being in the same uh, network uh, that can reach each other using uh, IP or uh, L2 or, or L3 technologies. So maybe uh, first uh, uh, question to the audience, uh, who is already familiar with technologies like Courier, uh, Kubernetes, Calico, I guess few. I, I'm seeing that there's also an expert of Galico and Courier, so it's good. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, why even uh, do we want to join uh, to these two technologies, containers and VM, into one single, uh, let's say, network? Uh, it's because uh, microservices and containers are gaining popularity, and also old workloads uh, are run inside data center. Uh, in VMs, so this would be good to have them uh, connected somehow in the networking layer. Uh, you, we can imagine use cases like front-end stateless services deployed in container and background uh, <coughs> like database services deployed uh, inside VMs. And also, what's uh, nice about having unified networking is to uh, have one single API uh, which will be like OpenStack Newton API for managing all the workloads in your cloud. And so uh, our assumptions are uh, we are using uh, OpenStack on top of Kubernetes cluster. So every uh, service is containerized uh, and we can leverage uh, uh, features from Kubernetes like failovers, resilience, and so on. And uh, like OpenStack is very popular and uh, has stable APIs, uh, it's good to use this API to manage uh, bo both VMs and containers networking layer. So Kubernetes is very reliable, founded by Google, and uh, has proven container on crustacean engine techniques. And uh, OpenStack on Kubernetes uh, is uh, bringing us ease of deploy fine grain control over the placement of services of OpenStack control plane and ability to do the rolling upgrades and self-healing uh, services. And uh, today uh, we will concentrate on bare metal containers, which is, uh, there is, a, I will, we're not talking about Magnum and uh, nested containers that are running inside VMs for security and other reasons. And uh, like I said, uh, we have uh, chosen two technologies like Calico and uh, Courier Plus OVS for L3 and L2 connectivity uh, purposes. Of course, there are other uh, like technology like Oven, OVN, Flanner, Wave, and Romana, which is doing the same, but yeah, we didn't you know, have time to spend uh, to cover all of them in this presentation. And uh, speaking about uh, uh, barometer containers, there is uh, and big open stack installations. There is many points uh, for deployers uh, which we uh, have facing too. Uh, is uh, first of all we need to make some some multi tenancy technology for big, big network, and uh, there is actually not such a big option uh, variance of options. There is uh, L2 segmentation with uh, VLAN uh, tunnels is growing. Up. And VXLAN and Geneva and GRE uh, is all the way to segment data tenant traffic. And uh, with uh, Calico and all the technologies like uh, Romana, we have another option to segment uh, customer uh, tenant traffic using the L3 segment L3 segmentation, where the 
uh, either far firewalling, uh, like uh, in Karlika case, either IP namespace in uh, like Ramana cases, using to segmentate uh, a traffic inside the data center network. Uh, uh, for HAF services, we, uh, in data center cases, we have all, also not so much of options because either we need to uh, install a uh, load balancer using IPVS, uh, a bunch of HAP proxies behind the very IP, uh, either we bought some uh, expensive hardware which uh, serve uh, us 10 gigs or more of traffic. Uh, so for design big data centers, uh, we uh, frequently need to invent some options to uh, terminate traffic on many, many boxes and use uh, and uh, we frequently start using OSPF or BGP endpoints to make multipass routing kind of uh, Kubernetes on bare metals and, and Kalika is, uh, uh, use BGP is pretty helpful for this. Uh, also, for exposing services uh, and to, to the internet, we need to somehow terminate all this traffic, not, not only in, inside the uh, cluster like uh, Kubernetes, uh, uh, does with their cluster APIs, uh, IPs, but, but uh, terminate traffic to the internet, so we need in, to somehow make a uh, filtration of uh, and fair warning of this traffic on. Uh, where is the next button? Okay. No, no, no. Okay. Um, it's not working. Uh, so, speaking about uh, a Kubernetes model of networking, uh, Kubernetes is, uh, uh, doesn't really care about how the networking is working behind the stack. It, it uh, implies that uh, uh, will be co communicated uh, without any port, uh, with any other port, uh, without any NAT, and uh, it gets the same API address as uh, inside a uh, net name space and outside net name space. So if a Kubernetes container somehow detects the IP address and send it to configuration server, so another port could communicate with this IP address. Uh, and uh, Kubernetes offload all the communicating with, within, between ports uh, to their CNI plugins. Uh, so Kubernetes doesn't really care about how the networking is working. Uh, So CNI driver is, uh, handles how the VTH uh, pair is set up, uh, how to connect it to some networking gear like bridges in a career case or like routing setup in Calico case. And also it's set up all underlying infrastructure is it, if it exists. Uh, also Kubernetes implies multi-tenancy models. So every port has a label, basic attribute which namespace it run to, uh, belongs to and uh, network technologies that provide some uh, some firewalling between of namespaces could uh, leverage this lab uh, labeling to set up multi tenancy uh, 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 isolation between tenancies. So Kalika is providing uh, not only routing for uh, VMs but on also uh, multi tenancy isolation. Uh, so for example, you, you could set up uh, Kalika policies to firewall traffic between ports, so you can communicate between ports of different namespaces. Uh, an another hard part of Kubernetes is on bare metal is uh, how to set up external access to Kubernetes. Uh, basically, Kubernetes provides a Q proxy mechanism that set up a kind of load balancer using IP tables, uh, and it set up virtual IP on every node and a port from uh, port could communicate to service with a set of port using a uh, uh, well-known IP address with, which is belong to service and it, it could be accessible to every Kubernetes node. This case, uh, 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 this mechanism also could be used to make access to service from outside. Uh, for, this, uh, for implementing this, you can set up external IP to the services. But there is also a problem because uh, as the uh, IP tables is uh, using st stateful NAT, you need to somehow synchronize uh, 
your state of not in, in case of uh, your service IP will will be set on different nodes. So uh, if uh, traffic goes to the next node, for example, if you start multipass routing for going for your data center, uh, IP tables on second node will will not be known how to <coughs> send the traffic, and you possibly get your traffic to another port and. Uh, your flow will be broken, or your TCP flow will be broken. Another case to solve this is using uh, Kubernetes not port technology, where the Kubernetes sets uh, not, uh, not not for virtual IP address, but for port on uh, some of the node, and you set the load balancer behind all of your infrastructure to uh, somehow balance traffic between your Kubernetes nodes or dedicated network nodes for this, but this requires another part of, uh, another uh, part in your infrastructure, another single point of failure. So actually the, the point uh, is Kubernetes still, uh, on bare metal still have no any clues how to expose services. Uh, they try to uh, cover this case with ingress L7, pro L7 proxies, which uh, could use as a pro programmatic router to HTTP services or every service which uh, is uh, right now co can be proxied by ingress, but the problem is still the same. Uh, Nginx is still the Kubernetes pod and it still requires to somehow handle balancing for them. Either you could, could put uh, Nginx to the uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, either you could put Nginx to the uh, hostnet mechanism and uh, somehow uh, configure VRP to share the same IP address. So right now Kubernetes for bare metal uh, is handles uh, well on the internet pod uh, networking using Kalik or other technologies, but still uh, couldn't be used well to handle external traffic. Uh, Yeah, so uh, uh, to uh, have a good view of how uh, OpenStack uh, networking can be mapped into the uh, Kubernetes abstraction or Kubernetes abstraction into the uh, OpenStack networking model, uh, I would like to you know, uh, say show what's the data abstraction for Neutron. And Neutron has ports, which has this um, connectivity information for a single endpoint, single VM, single port, and subnets which defines IP address ranges, uh, delivers gateways, uh, DHCP and DNS configurations options, and uh, networks which hold subnets and ports inside one bucket. So uh, there, every port on the same network should have uh, equal connectivity. And security groups for uh, managing the control, uh, access control to the endpoints, to the VMs, uh, setting up the firewall like in IP tables, and so on, and also floating IPs, which provides external uh, publicly readable IP addresses or uh, in data, data center use case, some uh, accessible IP address that is inside the corporate network range. And uh, for how the services are designed, uh, are placed on the computer network node, we have the VMs on compute node uh, connected with TAP interface with firewall bridge, Linux bridge, uh, when you are using the hybrid, high, high hybrid uh, firewall uh, inside OVS and uh, inter integration, all br integration bridge with uh, all uh, VHD uh, interface connected with the Linux bridge. Then the tra outside traffic is handled by tunneling bridge or VLAN bridge, it depends on your use case, and, and uh, tenant networks configuration. And on the network node we have, uh, the, of course, the tunneling or VLAN bridge with uh, integration bridge connected with uh, vRouter uh, namespaces where the routing is taking place. So uh, in, uh, 
usual scenario, the legacy scenario when you have centralized network node, the traffic uh, being routed from one VM to the other VM in other tenant network should go through the network node. So uh, it's like when even if two VMs are on the same node, uh, they will need to connect each other using the network node. Of course, if you are not using the DVR and uh, then it will be routed on the compute node. And also, in both cases, the DVR and legacy scenario, network node is handling the source node, so uh, for fixed IPs, uh, reaching the outside uh, internet access. Okay, uh, but Calico network is designed uh, very differently than the OpenStack networking. It provides uh, a, a big name, IP name, IP segment uh, to all the, of your cluster, which is then segmented to small subnets, like 26 for this case, and which each of this uh, subnet is uh, set on uh, every of uh, minion and pod get uh, pods get, get getting addresses from this namespaces on every pod, uh, every node, and to makes this flat networking works. Uh, Cardica uh, propagates uh, every of these small uh, prefixes using BGP protocol. So, uh, for this example, no, first node gets the row to uh, namespace of second node use BGP uh, that is set by Cardica internals. Uh, also, BGP could be used to integrate uh, with data center spine leaf uh, or uh, L3 uh, top of the rack uh, with routing capabilities, so even close topologies to, to propagate all the IP, uh, routers uh, that set uh, on the every node. So you don't need to set up any nodes, any tunnels. Uh, you just uh, push your routing information from the nodes to the to your networking inf infrastructure, e and the, it, it routes your IP, pa IP pa packets like uh, <coughs> usual without any. Uh, uh, special processing. Uh, also, Calica provides uh, isolation for every node, so uh, for every uh, every pod or every other kind of workload you, you set uh, by setting up endpoint firewall like uh, OpenStack does with their security groups. So you can uh, set up a fine-grained uh, uh, firewalling uh, using. Uh, somehow the same ter ter terminology that we are familiar with security groups. So you can uh, uh, filter uh, traffic by ports, by, by source addresses, and also by belonging to another workload. So you can uh, allow traffic from one namespace and forbid traffic from other namespaces. Uh, sorry, looks like it's not updated. Uh, yeah, it's not updated, and I can show, show this. Uh, so I, I, I talk about ex, uh, external network node. Uh, to to n make Calico working with external traffic, uh, uh, you can set up the Kubernetes uh, proxy on every node and tra road traffic for is, uh, every of this node. But another case you can build uh, for made on installations is dedicate some of uh, Kubernetes proxy nodes uh, which is running on only Q proxy component and then either uh, distribute routing uh, to your gateway using uh, BGP or just set up a co common address redundancy for every of your service using either Man also type of car for your P, you name it, or using some of Kubernetes uh, helpers that uh, are already, already designed to set up ERP using a Kubernetes API. Uh, this case will provides you with uh, much more fine-grained control of uh, how the traffic flows, and uh, by not using the routing to the, uh, Kubernetes external IPs and using a common address redundancy, you couldn't run into case where the traffic could get on the node where the IP table state doesn't share it. 
Yeah, so the second use case is uh, using Courier to manage uh, connecting VMs and containers. So what is Courier? Courier is, is OpenStack Big, Big Ten project uh, that aims to provide uh, neutral networking into the containers. So it does, it's already supporting Docker lib network and uh, Kubernetes support. Support is under development as we speak and as I uh, prepared this presentation one month ago and it was still evolving so some kind of information can be updated like on the on the in the master branch that may be already available so what does the courier do is uh, provide the cni driver for the kubelet um, on the worker node and uh, when uh, the cni driver and api watcher which was called raven you can see this yes so yeah so it's uh, it's uh, working like uh, in a manner when you start uh, containers inside the Kubernetes uh, CLI. Raven is uh, performing uh, uh, CRUD op operations on OpenStack Neutron Server, Cre creating ports, subnet, uh, or subnet are already uh, created inside Neutron. And uh, when the pod is placed on the node, the courier CNI driver is asking uh, uh, for the connectivity details and the, for example when you are starting po pod uh, Raven will ask for neutral server to create the port like it's for the VMs like Nova is doing then return back to uh, Kubernetes API with annotations details uh, inside this in annotations there are details how to connect and what's the port created for uh, this new started pod and then on the worker node, uh, CNI driver will uh, ask for the annotations for, from the Kubernetes API server. And then connect the pod uh, with VA ETH pair with the OVS uh, integrational bridge. As you can see on the screen, there's also VMs connected to the same OVS. Uh, and uh, in this case, you can have the L2 connectivity between VMs and containers. And uh, yeah, so the worker layout uh, is networking, servi networking services on worker node is that you have uh, containerized uh, kubelet CNI driver, containerized Nova compute, and uh, Neutron L2 agent. And uh, OBS is also containerized here. And uh, for the connectivity, like I said, the the ETH pair is connected also with uh, Linux Bridge, and the courier driver is doing that, uh, setting up the uh, port inside the integration bridge and connecting it to the uh, pod. It's, it's similar what Nova Compute does, which is setting up the tap interface and plumbing it into the integration bridge. And with two these two ports, Neutron L2 agent is responsible for wiring it up with uh, uh, port details from Neutron server. What's the, uh, what should be the local VLAN, if it's the, the same network on that already existing or on any other, and also connecting it to the tunneling bridge. So on the network node, uh, you can see that uh, it's uh, two, two way. it can be done two ways. So when you uh, install Courier, it can uh, create a default subnet for workload and service, uh, service IP. And uh, it, it can be like uh, I've, I've seen that uh, in current in master branch, you can uh, specify that don't create new one. You can use already existing ones in uh, Neutron, but you can you need to uh, map it before you can start Raven because Ra the IP, API watcher is uh, asking for subnet and uh, workload uh, for uh, subnet for workload and service cluster IPs creation. And as well, you have this Neutron L3 agent, DHCP agent, L2 agent, metadata, and so on. Uh, of yes, uh, service containerized. So this is kind of when you. Uh, when you start up and your car 
Cooler and uh, uh, Kubernetes plus uh, Neutron, you will get this kind of uh, layout. When you will uh, start new pod with, for example, uh, two replicas, uh, it will be spawned or on network, uh, sorry, on worker nodes, uh, like I've talked on the previous slide. And, and there will be load balancing. Uh, you can use uh, uh, load balancing instead of kube proxy for creating the um, HA proxy instance and uh, expose the service uh, like it's uh, designed in Kubernetes networking scheme. Uh, so every pod can access each other using this uh, work subnet, uh, uh, workload subnet and as well using the service cluster IP subnet. And uh, you, you will be having access to bo both of them. And this 1010, 20, uh, 223. And it, it will uh, round robin the requests for the pod uh, or, on, uh, or any other load balancing mechanism you will set up inside the HA proxy, for example. And when you will start VM, you can use the same workload subnet. So it can be spawned uh, using the same uh, subnet. And you can gain the connectivity between the uh, pods and VMs like on L2 level. And as well, using the router, VM is also uh, VM can also reach the uh, service cluster IP subnet and the load balancing mechanism. And so, when you want to expose your service to the internet, you need to uh, connect it uh, with uh, floating IPs uh, that you have defined and have the, the pool for your usage. Uh, so um, I had done it ma manually, but I, I'm not sure how about current status in uh, in, uh, in master branch for Courier, because uh, you can use the same API that you are uh, creating the floating IPs for VMs and then connect it into the uh, HA proxy load balancing port. So uh, you can define that in some kind in a external subnet this uh, load balancing 4.3 IP address is, uh, is connected to the lo load balancer. And then you can gain access to the uh, pod, uh, pods, these two pods uh, on underneath the load balancer. So it's kind of uh, double uh, routing the <laughs> mechanism because you, you will uh, access the load balancer first, and then it will uh, redirect you to the pod uh, currently to serve your request. Yeah, so this model mapping, as I said, it's important. Uh, so the namespace is uh, connected, is mapped to a network in OpenStack, from uh, Kubernetes namespace to OpenStack network. And the cluster subnet is um, mapped to subnet pool, uh, because in a Kubernetes use case, you can have the slash 24 or any other a subnet connected to each compute node, so you, you can map it to this cluster subnet. And uh, ser service cluster IP range, is, I, I, like I've talked, it's HA proxy, so it's virtual IP address uh, inside this uh, sub uh, uh, load balancing subnet. Uh, external subnet is ma mapped to floating IPs, and port is, also, of course, port. So it holds the d default information about IP and MAC address. And the service itself uh, is mapped to load balancing mechanism inside uh, OpenStack terminology. So what's the pros and cons uh, about using Courier? It's like it's, it's Big Tent project. It's, it has good community. And uh, it has simple architecture, uh, taking advantage of the CNI pluggable uh, architecture in Kubernetes. Uh, also, Courier can support other uh, technologies, networking technologies. It's not only OVS, but it, it can take advantage of Oven or, or any other. Uh, so it's using Newton API. So it's what we wanted to achieve, single API for all the workloads management uh, system for the VMs and containers. So the VMs and containers, of course, gets its uh, L2 connectivity. 
and uh, you can get the security groups applied for both VMs and containers. So, yeah, so I forgot to mention about Raven. Raven is also creating security group um, inside the Neutron API and Neutron security groups. So uh, you can apply the same security groups for both containers and VMs. And uh, what the cons that I uh, name it next steps, uh, it's that it's not ready yet, like it wasn't released. Maybe it will be in a short period of time. Uh, some time ago, it was uh, working only on Python 3, but I've seen that there's already merge changes that it uh, port the async your library into eventlet into Python 2.7. And um, so, I, like I presented, uh, the kube proxy have to be replaced with some other load balancing mechanism and uh, for um, better scalability and uh, uh, high throughput workloads. And well, what's the, uh, I guess, bigger uh, disadvantage of using Courier? It can be used only for overlay networks, so for the workloads. And uh, when you will install Courier, you, you need to provide all the Kubernetes and uh, OpenStack uh, containers uh, working in some kind of networking scheme. So it's um, for, like, uh, I, I've seen that some team has used uh, Flannel for setting up the uh, OpenStack on top of Kubernetes. And then we had added uh, Courier, or you can add Courier for the workload mechanism uh, to reuse the uh, networking created already in OpenStack. Yes, so the last point is that I, I think that it should be already addressed on master branch in Courier that uh, you can rework, you can reuse the existing networking uh, created inside Neutron to create pod, pod, pods uh, on Kubernetes uh, site. So, I, I, so this is kind of resources that we used for these presentations. And then I guess legal notice, Q&A. I can leave the resources page. So, do you have any questions? I got microphone here. So, if anyone would like us ask a question, so let's. Um, can you call maybe a career? Oh, sorry, you need to turn it on. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Yep. So, couldn't you use uh, Courier with Calico? Calico has a neutron. Yeah, yeah, so it's kind of also possible. So, Plugin. yeah. <laughs> because of the uh, Courier will be using, or it's already using OS Beef, yes, to connect uh, the interfaces, it can be pluginable to use. That uh, with other networking drivers that are not only OVS, OVN. I think, yeah, it has the, the plugin for Calico as well, right? Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, yes. uh, actually, Calico could be used as a uh, Neutron backend, but uh, if you use a uh, courier to connect a uh, 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 container workload using uh, uh, Calico as a backend, uh, it may be a chicken and egg problem until you may. Uh, prefer to use Kalika natively to the container using CNI and uh, using net, net, networking Kalika plugin for Neutron ML2 to connect your VMs to uh, Kalika. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you can use also Kalika for the underlay networking, yes. So you can set up Kalika as networking for uh, OpenStack services and then <laughs> use Courier for workloads there. So you can have also, that kind of mix. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Any other questions? If not, then thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you for attending.